my dear friends, welcome to our Palm Sunday service. Lent is over and we come now into Easter tide. It is my prayer that it will be a joyous one, even though it's the most different one I'm sure we've ever celebrated. But the Lord is with us nonetheless. He is journeying with us through all of this. Father in heaven, we praise you and we glorify your name that you are always with us, that you've never left us nor forsaken us. Now, Lord God, as we've come together to worship you, even like this, we pray your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your King comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon a donkey. Ride on. In, in the course of truth, for the sake of justice, your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever, and the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this, on this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise. But the path before him led to self-giving, suffering and death. Today we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne is the cross. We follow him this week from glory, from the glory of the palms to the glory of his resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Like the people who greeted Jesus as he entered Jerusalem and then later pronounced, Crucify him! We are fickle people who often deny Christ in our thoughts, words and deeds. Remembering the events of Jesus' last week helps us see ourselves for what we are, sinners in need of a Savior. Praise God, we have a Savior in Christ. In honesty and hope, we confess now our sins to God. O oh Lord, who on this day entered the rebellious city that later rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's, that our faith is often more show than substance, that our hearts are in need of cleansing. Have mercy on us, Son of David, Savior of our lives. Help us to lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting you to forgive what is sinful, to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises, and to receive us as your own. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. May you pardon and deliver you from all your sins. May you confirm and strengthen your know goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in his suffering and in his glory. O 
Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. everyone it's lovely to see you children yes Mikey crazy Mike is not around neither is Fannie Mae it's only me they decided that social distancing is very very important I hope you also observe social distancing and every time you go outside but I hope you're all safe and sound but today is Palm Sunday have you ever heard of Palm Sunday where you see people waving palm branches like these or people carrying palm crosses of every kind like these. I want to tell you and I'm going to show you how to make palm crosses in just a moment. But I want to tell you quickly what this is all about. Jesus comes in. He's about to go to Jerusalem, right? And as he comes closer, he sends his disciples into the city of the village of Bethphage to get a donkey for him. They get the donkey. They bring it to him. And just before he sits on the donkey, they put their cloaks over the donkey so that Jesus can sit on it. And then, with in just a moment, there's a, a throng of people, a crowd of people, and they're shouting all kinds of things. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the king of kings. And they are waving palm branches everywhere, and they're shouting. They see Jesus as their king. And I hope you see him as your king. But he's not a normal king like you would see him wearing a crown or sitting in a golden palace or wearing wonderful goji goji robes. No. His crown is going to be a crown of thorns. And his throne is going to be the cross. We're heading towards Easter. When we remember that, him being put on the cross for our sins. So when he comes into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he goes to, to die, really. He goes into his father's temple. He cleanses it. He drives people who are doing wrong things in the temple. And then he goes. And they send him to the cross where he dies. Will you thank him with me that he loves us that much? That not only is he our king, but he's also our savior. Lord Jesus, thank you very much for being our savior. Thank you for being our king. As we celebrate with everyone, we pray that we will celebrate rightly that you are truly our king and our God. Amen. Now I want to show you how to make a palm cross. You can use a strip of paper. I'll show you in a moment. Or you can find palms outside in your garden or neatly little plants that are nice long leaves. You can cut them into strips and you can use this. Let me show you this in a moment. I'm going to show you now how to make a palm cross. Now I have, I'm fortunate enough to have a palm branch like this. But here's the thing, if you can't find one, remember I said you can get a strip of paper and just cut it into nice, long, thin strips. Now, take, let, you see this? I tear that one off, like that, and I put it aside, and then you have this long, but this is too long. So you just cut it at the top, and then you cut it at the bottom. There you go. Like that, and now you have a lovely, beautiful palm brush, like that. Some palm branches are split into two. You want to split that as well. There you go. Now you have one long one. This one is about 50 centimeters long. You can have one about 40 centimeters long. It's okay. Now you take this. You see how long it is like that? And then you bend it almost a quarter of the way down like that. Right? 
Now the short side is facing you. You turn it around so that the long side is facing you. And then you take your thumb and your index finger and you put it there and then you turn. You see that? You turn it like that so that you have that beautiful fold like that in the front facing you and then you turn the leaf at the back. Look how beautiful that will look. You'll see. It will look stunning. And then you turn it like that and then you bring it back in. You can always slow me down whenever you want. You turn it back like that. Look at that. You can use paper, remember? So this, if you don't have palm branches, don't worry. Don't harass mom and dad about palm branches. There, look at that. Look at that. And then once you've turned it in, you come back to the front facing you. You bend it again like that so that it looks like that. You have that one coming up. And then you bring it to the back. And fold it at the base of the crisscross like that. You fold it like that at the bottom. And then you come up. Now you see right there you have the X mark. You see that? There you go. And then at the back now you have this kind of a thing like that. You see? And then you take this flappy one, you put it inside the base. Inside the base like that. Oh, look at my cross. Look at my cross. You see that? There it is. There it is. But then you have this little ugly thing showing out. What you can do is you pick up. I've got my scissors. Please be careful with your scissors. I've got mine. And then you can just nip it nicely. And what do you have? I love the cross. Mine is a bit lopsided. But you can make this all the time. At home with mom and dad. Make lovely palm crosses and you can take another little wool or string, string it across here and put it around you. Look, I've got nice ones. Here's another one. Here's another one I made. You see that? And with your paper one, it's like that. Look at that. I made a paper one like that. And what you can do with the paper one, the beautiful thing with the paper one, it doesn't have to look green all the time. You can take your crayons and color it nicely and put jewels, bejewel it nicely. Why don't you do that as you celebrate Palm Sunday? Listen, children, I really, really miss you. But it's best for us to stay apart for now until we see each other when all of this coronavirus thing is over. But I pray that you will stay safe. And may God bless you. We'll see each other again come Good Friday. And then it's going to be Easter time. I hope you have a blessed Easter. Bye-bye, everyone. Reading from Isaiah, chapter 50, beginning at the fourth verse. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. The Word of the Lord
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him 
and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of Christ Hello everyone, it's lovely to be with you again, having had my time with the children. Now we turn to, to all of you, and I hope the children are still around, and you may have your palm branches, and I've seen some people actually have uh, palm wreaths on their doors and all of those kind of things. Palm Sunday is a very special time. It's an entrance for us anyway to get into the whole Easter week. In fact, Easter time is not about just Good Friday, Saturday, and come uh, Easter morning on Sunday. But it's a whole week, a, an observance of what Jesus was doing that last week. The gospel, in fact, are full. Most of the gospels, more than half of their account is about the last week of Jesus' ministry here on earth. The last week before his crucifixion. And so here we are on that, um, on that verge on Palm Sunday when we come to celebrate together. It's the triumphal entry of our Lord Jesus Christ as our King. Now, we will use Matthew's Gospel, but Luke and Mark both have this beautiful triumphal entry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just a brief synopsis, you've heard it read already, but let me give you a, just a brief about it. Here is Jesus coming down from the Mount of Olives, Bethphage, the village of Bethphage is before him, and as he's about to enter Jerusalem, not very far, he's about to enter Jerusalem, and he tells his disciples to go and get a donkey, a young foal of a donkey, one that has never been ridden on. And they go, and it seems like it's prearranged, whichever way you want to take it. Some say this is Jesus' uh, full knowledge, which is uh, not beyond him. But some think it's prearranged. It sounds better, I think, anyway. And then they go and get the donkey. And they bring the donkey out to Jesus. And Jesus is about to, to ride on a donkey. But the disciples put their cloaks over the donkey. And Jesus sits on it. And immediately the crowd that has been following him begin to tear off their own cloaks Light bef late before the donkey, as the donkey rides into Jerusalem. And they ride on, and they tear off palm branches from the trees, and they begin to wave it, and they shout, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna to the King of Kings, Hosanna, and you hear these shouts. It's a real celebration. It's a real deep celebration, and we hear all of this going on. In fact, it annoys the powers that be, the religious powers that be, rather. And they, hey, Master, tell these people to keep quiet. And Jesus answers to, to them, listen, if I tell them to stop, the stones, the very stones that are lifeless, will rise up and shout the same, Hosanna to the highest. But why? Why is this so important? Here it is. Jesus from now, from for the past years, he's been ministering and, and going and healing and doing all kinds of things. And if you remember, he's been telling people, do not tell anyone who I am. He even shuts down demons who say, you are the, the son of David, the son of God. Uh, and he says, be quiet, and he mutes them. But now, he seems to be making a loud proclamation of who he really is. In fact, in chapter 21, the verses before the beginning of chapter 21, our text is chapter 21 verses 1 to 11, but in chapter 20, chapter 20 verses 29 following, we have, an, pardon me, we have an account of a blind man being healed 
in Jericho. Jesus has been making his way towards Jerusalem. And when he gets to Jericho, there's a blind man by the roadside. And he hears, it is, J Dave, it is Jesus who's coming by. And listen to his shout. It is not coincidental that Matthew puts this particular episode in the scriptures, in his account. Remember, Matthew, when he writes his gospel, his particular target audience is the Jewish people. But listen to the proclamation of the blind man who would not be silenced when he hears that Jesus is coming by. And I read, As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed Jesus. And two blind men sitting by the road, hearing that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd sternly told them to be quiet, but they cried out all the more, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Did you hear that? Son of David. Why son of David? That is a messianic proclamation, but not just a messianic one, but it is also a term that this Jesus, this man coming by, he is a king, the son of David, who will sit on the throne of David, not temporarily, but forevermore, as it has been prophesied through the prophet Samuel, through the prophet Nathan, and throughout the Old Testament, that this Messiah is the son of David, who will sit on David's throne. He will be the king from the tribe of Judah, from whom the scepter of the Lord will never depart. He is king of God's city, the city of David, Jerusalem. And now he comes. Matthew makes that point through these blind men. He makes a point very clear for us. That Jesus is the son of David. They shout out unprompted. Moved by the Holy Spirit. For sure. Jesus son of David. And now he comes. And the people are shouting. And shouting. I'm sure from previous Palm Sundays. You've heard that this same crowd. That this same crowd. Is the same crowd. That on Friday afternoon. Will be shouting crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. But what are they shouting for now? By the way, the term Hosanna, Hosanna means save us, save us. You'll find this term translated save us in chapter in, in the book Psalms, chapter 188, 118, the 25th verse. Blessed, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. In verse 25, it says, save us. Save now, Hosanna, same term is being used, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, of the Lord. That comes directly from Psalm 29, Psalm 118, verse 25 and 26. Check it out, please. But here's the thing, before I continue talking about these people, this don't miss the whole idea of a donkey. The fall of a donkey. It's called a triumphant entry. Why is he triumphantly entering his city as king on a donkey? Who does that? What kind of a king does that on a donkey? No. It's not a coincidence either. Listen. Verse 5 of, verse of chapter 25. Of chapter 21. Verse 5. As it has been said through the prophet... This is the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 9. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the foal of a donkey. Did you hear that? It's been prophesied by Ezekiel way back that he will come right them. It's a peaceful entry. It's a triumphant entry. 
a, a king. This was normal for a king to come in triumphantly riding on a donkey. That, hey, war has been won. We have triumphed. No longer is a time for war. And in fact, these palm branches were symbolic of this triumph. Were symbolic of this triumph. And them throwing their cloaks was, in our term, a red carpet entry of our triumphant king. That's what was happening. But here's the thing. He goes into the city, riding on a donkey, his own city, Jerusalem. What is he going to do there? Why are these people that we've heard will flip-flop very soon in, on Friday when they will shout, crucify him? Here they are. They've been oppressed for the majority of their time by Romans, by all other, uh, other kingdoms that had conquered them. They are under oppression. And they've seen Jesus working amazing miracles, raising the dead, making the blind see and the deaf mutes to, to hear and to speak. The lame leap for joy. He feeds many. And now he is crowned king. He is said to be king. The people have an expectation of Jesus. They have a high expectation of Jesus that he will drive out the oppressors, that he will set them free. Now they don't know what kind of kingdom he has. They didn't understand that he is a king not to drive out the Romans, not to, to meet their temporal needs, but his king to sort out and set them free from the bondage of sin. And he will triumph. He will not attempt. He will not try to save. He will save his own. When he goes on the cross like a lamb to the slaughter, when he goes to the cross, when he is suffering, he will save us. But that way to the cross is through this triumphant entry. He will be king of the Jews, king of the world. My friend, I've got to ask this because I want to drive the point through come Monday, Thursday, come Good Friday. Is Jesus your king? What do you expect of him? Do you expect him to heal you of, or to heal our world of the coronavirus? I pray he does. I pray he does. Do you pray, expect that he will meet your temporal needs? You need a job, you need food, you need a husband. Oh, why? I pray he does. But let me tell you something else, much more important. Someone put it like this, that Jesus cares more about your holiness than he does about your happiness. Yes, he cares about your happiness, but he wants to see you holy on his side. The question I will ask, is he your king? Is he your Lord? Will you shout to him, Hosanna in the highest? Hosanna, save, save, O oh blessed one. Will you shout with a blind man? Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Will you do that? I pray you do that. Heavenly Father, you're a great king, enthroned in the heavens above. When the crowds did not know what kind of a king you were, when the world had no clue, you revealed yourself to be the king eternal, to come and set your people free from the bondage and the slavery of sin. And you've made us your own. And you bought us by the price of your own blood. All praise and glory be to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. May God truly bless you as we enter our Easter time. God's grace to you.
Let us pray. God, whose gracious love for us embraced that long and lonely journey to the cross, gather us close to you in these days when again we make that journey in meditation and recollection. Help us to contemplate again the way taken by our Savior, the false charges against him, the fear and flight of disciples, the kiss of betrayal, the crown of thorns, the purple robe. And in such contemplation, give us courage to face those times in our own lives when he received the same at our hands. Yet help us also to remember that you have gone before us. So we look for you for compassion and forgiveness, knowing you are able to save. When we are weak, make us strong. When hurt and resentful, make us forgiving. When defeated and discouraged, make us hopeful. Keep us from asking for mercy without giving it ourselves, for, from praying for your kingdom, but never working for it. In this week, deepen our faith by your matchless grace. Deepen the measure of our gratitude and Christian obedience. Move us who have so much to share with others who have little, Uphold us when we, sum, when we summon our courage to speak out for the alien and stranger within our gates and for those long denied dignity and freedom. Guard and guide us through these days of meditation and remembrance. Guard and guide us through all our days, until we come at last to that day when all our days and journeys will be gathered into your eternity, and we shall be with you forever. Glory be to you, O God. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Together, Hosanna.
arms were spread on the cross to embrace the whole world. Help us this week to take up the cross and follow him. Amen. May the God who sent his Son so that we could be adopted as God's own children send his Spirit into your hearts, especially in this week of remembrance and renewal, and equip you to live as God's own children, dearly beloved and called to serve a needy world. Thanks be to God.